ultimately work from your office and, you know, do Zoom conferences or even debates. But I would think he needs to avoid anyone for probably the next 14 days at least uh, until, um, first of all, he's in a good frame of mind and good health to be able to make decisions and speaks, you know, appropriately. And secondly, that he's not a risk to others, which will be, I think, at least 10 or 14 days from now. Professor, thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you. Now, Chaz, one of the questions that's been asked of me the most in the last few hours on social media and elsewhere is, well, what happens if President Trump, one, dies or two, becomes so ill that he can't be president? What happens there? That all comes down to the 25th Amendment yep. of the United States Constitution. Section 1 is, uh, is the most severe one. That's, that's regarding death. It says that in case of the removal of the president from office or of his death or resignation, the vice president shall become president. So Mike Pence becomes president any time between now and midday on the 20th of January, no matter what the election outcome is. The election will happen on the 3rd of November. Even though President Trump is on the ballot, uh, Mike Pence would still succeed to the office prior to January the 20th and then whoever wins the Electoral College will become president. Maybe Mike Pence, maybe Joe Biden at, at that stage. Um, Section 3 talks about what happens in illness or incapacity, and that's usually invoked Section 3. It's only been invoked a few times um, when... Uh, Ronald Reagan? Ronald Reagan had a colonoscopy. Yep. George W. Bush had a couple of colonoscopies yep. as well. That's when they know they're going in for a procedure yep. with a general anaesthetic. They uh, sign a letter over to the, uh, to the Speaker of the House and the President pro tempore of the, the Senate, Chuck Grassley, uh, saying, basically, I'm going under. The Vice President is President until I send you another letter saying, hey, I'm back. Mm. Which, of course, means that if there are complications uh, and the, they are incapacitated, in a coma, die from surgery, etc., again, the Vice President is uh, in control. Uh, then, of course, there's the possibility of Donald Trump holds on to office, doesn't sign a letter, but under Section 4, if he is perhaps comatose. Uh, then it takes uh, the Vice President and at least half the members of Cabinet to say, well, the President can't be President, he can't make decisions like whether to, you know, press the big red button on the desk. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you need half the Cabinet to, to write to the, the Congress and say the President should be removed from office, Vice President Mike Pence becomes Acting President of the United States. That is also the section that some people were kind of hoping would be invoked when they said Trump's crazy, he should be removed mm. from office. So those are the options that are open uh, right there. But it does throw this huge question mark and also a huge question mark over next week's vice presidential debate with Mike Pence and, and Kamala Harris because we could be in a situation next week where Mike Pence becomes acting president of the United States and a question as to whether that debate should proceed or whether we are effectively seeing a new presidential debate. And then questions about... Would Mike Pence then go and conduct the next two presidential debates against Joe Biden? All sorts of possibilities, and we are in literally uncharted waters there. We absolutely are. And I should say that if the worst happened before the election and he died, then Mike Pence would be president, but not necessarily the Republican nominee yep. for president. They would have to choose him, and they would choose Mike Pence, obviously, at this late date, but they, they don't have to. Yes, it's not a constitutional requirement, yeah. in the same way as if uh, Vice President Biden had been exposed to the coronavirus either by President Trump or his staff or by somebody else, but if Joe Biden would also become ill, which is not impossible, and again, a man in his late 70s in Biden's case, could also run the risk of serious complications. If he was unable to stand at the election, then the Democratic Party would have to go through a nomination process, which they do very quickly and on the internet, mm. and Kamala Harris would presumably become the nominee. But that's not automatic. There's no constitutional mm. assumption of that power. The question is, though, the more likely scenarios, where he either remains asymptomatic or becomes mildly symptomatic... Yeah. How does campaigning work? Right. I, I imagine, like for a state, he can't campaign for two weeks, yep. regardless. I imagine Joe Biden. Well, he can't. He can't go to rallies, yeah. but he can. He can do the Joe Biden's basement campaign. He can. He can. I imagine whatever he does, Joe Biden will happily match him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Joe Biden's going to complain about that. Um, but if it becomes it becomes seriously symptomatic, if he's sick, if he's not dead, but he's yep. sick and he's in hospital, what do we just call off the election campaign for the next five weeks and then there's an election? without a campaign. Yeah. Well, I mean, as we'll see a little later in the program, uh, 
President Trump is behind in his re-election, mm. badly behind, just over a month out from the election. And he put in a pretty shocking debate performance uh, this week as well. Uh, and, uh, well, it's going to be interesting to find out whether he was experiencing any symptoms earlier in the week, uh, whether that affected his performance at all. There are some people saying that he was, he was, he was hot, he was sweating, he was carrying on, etc. We just don't know. As for the impact that this could have, I mean, to an extent, that is very much determined on whether the President sails through this as... Mm. As on a human level, we would hope that he is he is fine. And his doctor says at the moment he is well. Whatever yeah. that means. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. And the guy, he doesn't drink, he doesn't mm. smoke, uh, he has no history of respiratory problems, which is one of the big risk factors as well. Uh, but he's uh, he is a you know he's a he's a big guy. Uh, so if if Trump is uh, largely asymptomatic, if he gets a light dose of this, and he's back out on the campaign trail in a couple of weeks, is there any way he can turn this to his advantage and say? See, it wasn't that bad after all. I don't know what all the fuss about. Or does the fact that there are already 205,000 dead Americans mean he can't possibly say that? He has to be gracious. He has to say, I'm lucky I got the best possible medical care. I've recovered. Now's the time for America to recover. How does he spin this to a positive? Look, I think, first, firstly, we don't know how this is going to play. There's so many variables at this point in time. People might start feeling sympathetic towards him. Maybe he's not affected at all. He comes out, Mr Strongman, I beat it. He might turn it into a hydroxychloroquine thing, for all we know. We have well, no we, idea. We know that hydroxychloroquine didn't work as a prophylactic now, at least. Well, well he wasn't taking it now. He only took it months ago. Uh, so, like, so, right, so he's going to say, I shouldn't have stopped. <laughs> he all might, those people he told might. him to stop. We have no idea where this is going to go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, what, what we do know is that at least for the next two weeks, we're going to be talking about nothing but COVID, and that is always bad news. News for Trump. Right, so Trump yeah. puts that back on the agenda yeah. where he was hoping that anything else, the Supreme yeah. Court, I mean, who cares about the Supreme Court? All of a sudden we have a president with a potentially life-threatening illness, even though his chances of survival are, are good, objectively, mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this is still potentially a big deal. But what if this does go further? What if Mike Pence is infected? What if, I mean, the, 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 the inner circle, uh, First Lady Melania Trump has also got this illness. This is, this is the stuff of, of, uh, of thriller novels, mm. uh, that, that uh, you, there's a contagion that gets into the residents, not just the West Wing. Well, look, yeah, there are a lot of people who make contact with Trump without masks, close contact, because everyone's getting tested, mm. so they all, they all act like they're safe, essentially. Yeah. And if someone gets through... And yeah. there's the question of trust as well. Mm. Donald Trump literally wrote his own doctor's letter who said he was the fittest, mm. most vibrant person ever sworn in as President of the United States. In the next two weeks, a large number of people are going to believe it when they see on, 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 uh, on social media that Trump is really sicker. There's now a body double for Trump. I mean, this, is, th this could get crazy town very quickly. It could. Let me just ask you, just to go back a little bit, if, let, let's take the hospitalised situation. Mm. He's not dying, but he's in hospital for a month. Is there any chance at all that they, that the Congress agrees to pass a bill to delay the election two or three weeks? Because I mean, well, they might just say it's not fair. It's just yeah. not fair for, for even though Joe Biden stops campaigning, mm. it's just not fair to have one person in hospital for the month before the election. Mm. I think, given how much, so they, they need to pass a bill for that to happen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I, I think there's very, very little chance that the Repub uh, the uh, Democratic majority in the House would consider passing such a bill, given that President Trump has already floated the idea earlier in the year of mm. delaying the election because of coronavirus. Mm. He wasn't saying about him getting coronavirus, mm. but given the uh, amount of mischief that he has made at casting doubts over this election process itself, uh, I think the potential chaos of rescheduling. The election, and then what do you do if if, if Joe Biden gets sick? Yeah. Do we say, okay, we're going to make the election uh, what in February next year? I think I, I don't imagine that could could possibly happen. Yeah. Yeah. But look, before this came along, Chaz, we yes. thought the biggest story of the week was going to be that incredible debate. The fallout continues from what was a very very messy first yeah. encounter, and it may there could be an upside to all of this. That may just be the only debate we get to see between <laughs> President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. Apart from the constant interjections from Donald Trump, which has now brought about a change in rules if there is a second debate in two weeks from now, a lot of the criticism afterwards centred around this exchange in particular. Are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not 
add to the violence in a number of these cities, as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what are you, what are you, you what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and white right like supremacists. White proud 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 supremacists and right proud proud militia. Boys, stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left. Telling white nationalists to stand back and stand by, that was pretty bad. Bad enough for the usually very Trump-friendly Brian Kilmeade on Fox & Friends to say this. But Donald Trump blew the biggest layup in the history of debates by saying, not condemning white supremacists, I don't know if he didn't hear it, but he's got to clarify that right away. That's like, are you against evil? Um, why the president didn't just uh, knock that out of the park, I'm not sure. Well, here's an interesting theory from the former Republican Senator Rick Santorum, who sort of, well, basically said it was Chris Wallace's fault. He was asking the president to do something that he knows the president doesn't like to do. Which is? Which is say something bad about people who support him, right? What, declining and, violence? Yeah, well, well Talking about the, the white supremacy. supremacy. Yeah, the white supremacists. Which, as shocking as it may seem, Rick Santorum may be very close to the truth there. Anyway, later that afternoon, with growing calls from the likes of Republican Senator Tim Scott to clarify the comments in the debate, it was clearly time for a presidential do over. I don't know who the Proud Boys are. I mean, you'll have to give me a definition because I really don't know who they are. I can only say they have to stand down, let law enforcement do their work. OK, stand down, but don't stand by. Still a bit too respectful to neo-Nazis for many people's comfort, <laughs> Chaz, but certainly an improvement of what he said on the debate. But what do you think of that from Rick Santorum? Because I kind of felt that you, whether you think that Trump is a racist or pandering to racists or not, it's very consistent with a lot of the seemingly outrageous things that he says or will not say, not just about white nationalists, but about Vladimir Putin and a whole bunch of others, he just doesn't have it in him to criticise somebody who says nice things about him. He Look, just can't do it. I think that is true. I mean, we all recall, I think, what he said about um, Jeffrey Epstein's offside. Yeah, sure. I couldn't condemn her because she's been nice to him in the past. Right. I actually take it further than Rick Santorum, though. I'd say it's not just about him not condemning people who are nice to him, but also he doesn't like to take a backward step. When mm. someone tries to corner him into doing anything, he just instinctively refuses to do it. And it's quite childish and it gets him into trouble. And I, but I think this is part of what that is. He thinks it shows strength yeah. to, not, to not be cajoled into doing anything. Yeah, but it's, I mean, we, you know, in a way we have seen this movie before. Oh, yeah. Uh, David Duke, former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, endorsed Trump in 2016 and Trump uh, refused to uh, renounce the support of the KKK. And also said he didn't know who David Duke was, yeah. even though he did know who David Duke was. And by the way, on the Proud Boys, mm. they're on Tucker Carlson every second day. Mm. And, like, <laughs> but Trump watches a lot of Tucker Carlson. He knows yeah. who the Proud Boys are. Yeah, and, and for those that don't know, we don't necessarily give them sort of too much publicity, but they are a group that uh, advocates uh, very violent, like, you know, basically inciting Trump supporters to violence and going into uh, situations such as we've seen over the Black Lives Matter protests mm. and just attacking people. The, the kind of YouTube videos that their, their founder puts out is advocating just assault. Yeah, the founder, the founder Gareth, Gareth McInnes, he, he does advocate violence openly. He out. makes Alex Jones look sane, that guy. <laughs> yes, I mean, he's, he he's out there. He does. Uh, and, and, yeah, now, look... I, I, I was one of the people who was saying, you know, Trump was Trump didn't necessarily mean stand by, as in stand by, wait for my signal, as if mm -hmm. he'd written it out. Like he was yep. dribbling on his way to say what he really wanted to say, which was, how about Antifa? Which yep. is what he said about five seconds later. A lot of the right have pointed out that when he was first told, are you going to denounce these people? He said, sure. And they said, mm -hmm. well, there you go. He, he, he was happy mm -hmm. to denounce them. But see, for me, it doesn't matter whether he actually meant it as it was taken or not, or whether he just did a poor job of dealing with it. Brian Kilmeade's right. That is the easiest question in the world to answer. He isn't a novice president now. He's been there for four years. This has happened so many times. Mm. If I'm not saying that he is, he is sympathetic to white nationalists or anything like that. He's condemned them big time once or twice before, OK? It's happened, right? He has condemned them. Usually but... after failing to condemn them a number of times and then three days later 
is forced to go out and condemn well, them. Well, after the El Paso shooting in particular, he gave a big speech off the auto queue where, yes. where, he, where he condemned them heavily. Yeah. But all which, which was after Charlottesville. Yes. And after yes. and after he had done that both sidesism, yeah. uh, and 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 frankly, this week he wasn't saying there are bad people on both sides. He was essentially saying the real problem is Antifa. He was, he was. I, I'm not making excuse for him here. I'm saying it's it's enough time has passed, and this mm. has happened enough times. That he should be able to answer a basic question right. without people making excuses for him. Yeah. And so I and so I I think he's out of credits in this regard personally. Uh, the problem for me is regardless of what his intentions were. The Proud Boys interpreted it as explicit encouragement. One prominent Proud Boy wrote at the time, Trump basically told us to go F them up. This makes me so happy. And then another Proud Boy immediately incorporated Trump's phrase into their logo. So in the end, whether Trump meant it to be an encouragement of extremism or not, that is its effect. And he's the president. So yeah. that's all that matters. He should know better. Yeah, well, as for who won the debate, this guy has an opinion. I